Chapter 13 Crooked Paw's breath billowed in the cold air and turned to ice on his whiskers. Frosted snow cracked under Paw as he followed his clanmates down the bank toward the river. His pelt pricked with excitement, his first gathering. He pressed against Oakheart. Will we use the two-leg bridge? Hailstar was leading the patrol along the shore toward the wooden crossing. The frozen river shone silver below as it snaked up into the gorge. It's the safest way to cross tonight, Okar whispered. Warriors never made use of two-leg paths if they could help it, but the frozen river was untested, and the stepping stones were too icy to risk. Hailstar jumped over the low fence onto the bridge and landed in churned snow. Bright sky followed, her paws slithering on the frosty rail. Petal dust ducked under it as Beetlenose scrambled over. Hurry up, you two, Cedar Pelt called over his shoulder. Crooked Paw bounded forward, Oakheart's pelt brushing his as they skidded down the bank. Alfur and Otter Splash slipped onto the bridge just ahead of them, their pelts sharply outlined against the white ground. Brambleberry, her pelt pale as the snow, followed like a ghost behind them. Shellheart paused beside Cedar Pelt and let Crooked Paw and Oakheart pass. I hope it's a peaceful gathering, he mewed. Cedar Pelt sniffed. Surely even ThunderClan wouldn't break the full moon truce. As the two warriors fell in behind, Crooked Paw glanced over his shoulder. Wind Clan might, he predicted. They'll still be angry that ThunderClan attacked their camp, Oakheart agreed. Shellheart padded onto the bridge. We're angry they took Grey Kit and Willow Kit, he pointed out, but we won't fight over them tonight. Crooked Paw pricked his ears. When will we fight over them? Shellheart glanced at Hailstar. Probably never, he muttered. Crooked Paw peered over the side of the bridge. Moonlight glared on the ice. He looked up, blinking, and saw his clanmates streaming up the slope toward ThunderClan territory. Aren't we going to follow the path beside the waterfall? Oakheart shook his head. There's a truce, he reminded him. We can cross ThunderClan territory straight to the hollow tonight. Crooked Paw was out of breath by the time he reached the top of the short, steep rise. Oakheart had already disappeared into the trees crowding on either side. He gazed up at the looming trunks, wrinkling his nose. Don't you like it? Brambleberry had waited for him. It smells horrible, Crooked Paw shivered. The bushes growing around the trunks were drenched with ThunderClan scent. Are you excited about the gathering? Brambleberry asked gently. Yeah. Why wouldn't he be? I'm very proud of you, she murmured. After you broke your jaw, I thought you'd never become an apprentice. She glanced at him. But you've grown so strong. I hardly recognize you. A purr rolled in her throat as she quickened her pace and caught up with the rest of the patrol. Crooked Paw watched their pelts flashing through the undergrowth. Drifts of snow hemmed the trail even here, where the sky was hardly visible. No wonder ThunderClan wants sunning rocks, Crooked Paw muttered to himself. They must never see the sun in here. He was relieved when they broke out of the forest and wind swept the stink of ThunderClan from his pelt. As his clanmates halted, Crooked Paw fluffed out his pelt. The land sloped away at his paw tips, opening into a wide valley. In the middle, four great oaks guarded a clearing. Four trees. Bright Sky paced the crest of the slope. We're the last to arrive. Mudfur tasted the air. ThunderClan just got here. It's very quiet, Petaldust whispered. Crooked Paw narrowed his eyes. Countless pelts swarmed between the four oaks, shoaling like fish around a huge boulder. That must be the great rock. A growl rumbled in Hailstar's throat. They've started without us. The River Clan leader plunged down the slope, snow flying in his wake. Alfur and Shellheart followed. Beetlenose and Mudfur on their tail. Come on! Oakheart bounded after them. Crookedpaw hesitated. Cedarpelt nudged him. Are you ready? To be announced as a River Clan apprentice? To meet the other clans as an equal? Yes. Energy fizzed beneath his pelt. Let's go! Crookedpaw leaped over the edge and streamed down the slope with his clanmates. Moonlight lit their glossy pelts as they raced for the clearing. Crooked Paw pushed harder, catching up with them as they skidded to a halt beneath a giant oak. He stared up through the branches, his eyes wide. 
It was bigger than any tree in RiverClan territory. It was even bigger than ThunderClan's trees. He felt dizzy. Did the top branches touch the stars? Come on. Hailstar flicked his tail and pushed into the crowd. Crookedpaw scanned the sea of pelts, confused by jumbled scents. Oakheart slid among the gathered cats and disappeared as Hailstar jumped onto the great rock where three other cats waited, starlight glinting in their eyes. Crookedpaw looked at his mentor. Which way do I go? Follow me. Cedarpelt nudged his way between two tabby toms. The toms leaned aside to let him pass, and Crookedpaw followed, keeping his nose to Cedarpelt's tail until they stopped in the middle. It's warmer here, Cedarpelt murmured. Crookedpaw, hot with excitement, wished it wasn't. He turned on the spot, staring. He'd never seen so many cats. Where were his clanmates? His heart lurched as he spotted Reed Feather. The Wind Clan warrior sat among his clanmates, staring up at the great rock, ears flattened against the cold. Crookedpaw stretched up, balancing on his hind legs to get a better look. Don't stare, Cedarpelt nudged him and he stumbled forward. Watch out! A pale gray she-cat with ThunderClan scent turned and hissed at him as he fell against her. Her long fur quivered with annoyance. You nearly knocked me over. She stopped and stared at him. For the first time in moons, Crookedpaw remembered his twisted jaw. He shrank beneath his pelt. Why did she have to stare like he was a talking frog? He swallowed and steadied himself with a deep breath. Hi, he mewed. I'm Crookedpaw. Crooked paw? Her eyes were round and blue and hid nothing. He could see her thoughts. She knows it's not my paws that are crooked. I'm guessing my warrior name will be Crooked Jaw, he joked half-heartedly. She was still staring at him. He swallowed back irritation. Were all ThunderClan cats this rude? Unless, he flicked his tail under her nose, my tail goes the same way. Then Hailstar might have to rethink. The gray cat shifted her paws. Crookedpaw frowned. Okay, ThunderClan cats are rude. I should have guessed cats would stare at me. I'm sorry, guilt sparked in her gaze. You surprised me, that's all. Crookedpaw lifted his chin. I'd better get used to it, he mewed, until everyone gets used to me. Why bother being upset over something he couldn't change? At least no one forgets my name, he pointed out. What's yours? Blue Paw. Crooked Paw sat back on his haunches and looked at her. You're not very blue. Blue Paw purred. I look more blue in daylight. Crooked Paw glanced around at the clans. Is this your first gathering? Blue Paw shook her head. Then you know what's going on? He asked. What do the leaders talk about? If you listened, you might find out, Cedar Pelt hissed sharply. Crooked Paw ducked forward and whispered in Blue Paw's ear, Which one is Pine Star? Blue Paw flicked her tail toward a reddish brown tom on the rock. Oh, yes. Crooked Paw recognized him from Sunning Rocks. The Thunder Clan leader's eyes shone green in the moonlight, his powerful shoulders rippling as he moved to give Hailstar more space. Why haven't you come before? Blue Paw was looking at him curiously. You must have been an apprentice for moons. I was apprenticed late, Crooked Paul whispered. I was a pretty sickly kit. Why bother giving the details? Not anymore, though, he puffed out his chest. I think I surprised my clanmates by growing this big. Blue Paul's whiskers twitched. Warmth lit her blue eyes. Hush, a pretty tortoiseshell warrior leaned over. The leaders are speaking. Sorry, Crooked Paul waited for her to turn away, then whispered in Blue Paul's ear, Which one's Heather Star? He wanted to know what Willow Kit's new leader looked like. The small one, Cedar Star's next to her. Shadow Clan's leader. Blue Paul nodded toward a small knot of cats gathered at the side of the Great Rock. Brambleberry was sitting with them, and Crooked Paul guessed they must be the clan's medicine cats. That's Goosefeather, our medicine cat. Crooked Paul blinked. It was the cat who'd chased him on the stepping stones when he'd fallen in. He scowled. If that flea bag hadn't chased me, I wouldn't have broken my jaw. I'd be Stormpaw now. I might even be a warrior. Blue Paw interrupted his thoughts. And the white cat is Sage Whisker, the Shadow Clan medicine cat. She shuddered as she pointed out a tom beside Sage Whisker. 
That's Hawkheart. There was a snarl in her mew. Don't you like him? He killed my mother. Crooked Paul swallowed. At least Rainflower is still alive. Without thinking, he touched Blue Paw's cheek with his tail, whisking it away as he remembered she was from another clan. Where are the deputies? he asked quickly. A bright ginger Tom turned his sharp yellow gaze on them. The Thunder Clan deputy is right in front of you, and he'll pull out your whiskers if you don't do as you're told and be quiet. Crooked Paw rolled his eyes at Blue Paw. Were all senior warriors bossy? She stifled a purr as she turned to watch the leaders. Crooked Paul followed her gaze. The great rock was sunk deep into the earth, as though dropped from silver pelt by Star Clan. Heather Star stood at the edge. We have restocked our medicine supplies, her eyes flashed toward the Thunder Clan cat. And all our elders and kits have finally recovered from the unprovoked attack by Thunder Clan. A Thunder Clan Tom growled. We fought only warriors. No kit or elder was attacked. Or st- Stolen. Crooked Paw heard Otter Splash's bitter mew. The white and ginger she cat was staring at Reed Feather. The Wind Clan warrior turned. They weren't stolen, he growled. They were taken home. A Wind Clan Tom beside him snapped his head around and glared at Otter Splash. She didn't flinch, meeting the gaze, chin high. Alfer pushed through the crowd and lined up beside Otter Splash. Calm down, Cedar Pelt warned through gritted teeth. Don't forget the truce, Alfer narrowed his eyes. Like Hailstar's forgotten Willow Kit and Gray Kit? I'm glad Fallowtail's not here, Beetlenose hissed over the heads of a knot of ThunderClan warriors. Reedfeather whipped around and stared at the young Tom. Let her come next time, he snarled. Then I can tell her how much our kits prefer eating rabbit to fish. Crooked Paul unsheathed his claws. Pelts were bristling around him. Growls rumbled ominously. Blue Paw tensed. Crooked Paw smelled her fear scent. He stared at the leaders on the rock. They shifted their paws as though each was unwilling to be the first to call for calm. Great Star Clan, it's cold. Crooked Paw pressed against Blue Paw, hoping to distract her. She flinched at his touch, then relaxed. Pine Star stepped forward. Thunder Clan is thriving despite the snow. Beetlenose was pushing through the crowd toward Reed Feather. No cat with a drop of River Clan blood could enjoy rabbit, he snarled. Reed Feather's hackles lifted. He showed his teeth as Beetlenose neared him. Beetlenose? Shellheart slid through the crowd, blocking the young warrior's path. What in the name of Star Clan do you think you're doing? He pressed Beetlenose back, steering him to the edge of the crowd and clamping the black warrior's tail to the ground with one paw. Stay here. Hailstar was padding to the edge of the great rock. The River Clan leader lifted his muzzle. River Clan has been free from two legs since the snows came. Except those two leg kits, Otter Splash called. Alfer answered his clanmate. They won't be back for a while, Crooked Paw purred. That'll teach them to slide on the ice. Blue Paw gasped. Did they fall in? They only got their paws wet, Crooked Paw reassured her. Mouse brains. He felt pleased he'd used a Thunder Clan word. Every River Clan cat knows to stay off the ice unless a warrior's tested it first. Hailstar flicked his tail. Fishing is good despite the ice. His gaze scanned his clan. Crooked Paul leaned forward, excited, as it settled on Oakheart. And we have one new warrior. Welcome, Oakheart. Wind Clan cheered, Shadow Clan's voices joining them in welcoming the clan's newest warrior. That's my brother, Crooked Paw told Blue Paw. She blinked at him. Who? Oakheart, Crooked Paw explained. He's my littermate. Blue Paw stretched up to get a better view. He's great, Crooked Paw purred proudly. He caught a fish on his first day as an apprentice. The day I ran away. He pushed the memory away. He says that when he becomes leader, he'll make me deputy. Should I warn him I plan on being leader first? I have a sister, Blue Paw shot back. She nodded toward a snowy she-cat sitting a tail length away. She's a brilliant hunter too. Maybe if they both become leader, we could be deputies together, Crooked Paw mewed politely. Blue Paw frowned. Deputy, I want to be leader. Yeah, me too. 
Bluepaw's tortoiseshell clan mate flicked her ear with a paw. Hush! The warrior sounded cross. How many times do you have to be told? Sorry. Bluepaw dipped her head. Crooked Paw turned back to the great rock. Cedar Star was speaking. It is with sadness that I must announce our deputy, Stone Tooth, is moving to the Elder's Den. A thin gray tabby standing at the foot of the rock nodded solemnly as his clan called his name. He doesn't look so old, Blue Paul whispered. The gray Tom's teeth curled from under his lip like claws. Crooked Paw choked back a purr. Just a bit long in the tooth. Blue Paw nudged Crooked Paw, purring too. He can't help it. Ragged Pelt will take his place, Cedar Star went on. A dark brown warrior stalked from the crowd of Shadow Clan cats into a pool of moonlight below the rock. Crooked Paw noticed the fur lifting along Blue Paw's spine as Ragged Pelt's clanmates yelled his name. She was watching the Shadow Clan cats gathered at the foot of the rock through narrowed eyes. She doesn't trust them at all. Was it just because they were Shadow Clan? Maybe there would be time to ask her later. As the leaders jumped down from the great rock, he watched the clans melting into their separate groups. He tasted the air, collecting scents as he memorized as many pelts as he could. Come on, Cedar Pelt nudged him. Let's go. It's too cold to hang around and share tongues. He threw a look at Wind Clan as they climbed the other side of the hollow, heading up to the moors. And I don't think any clan would want to share tongues tonight, even if it was Greenleaf. Crooked Paw followed his mentor. Are the clans always so angry with one another? Cedar Pelt twitched his ears. Leaf Bear makes bellies hungry and tempers short. Oakheart's mew made Crooked Paw jump. What did you think? Crooked Paw purred as his brother fell in beside him. It was great, he replied. I met a Thunder Clan apprentice. She's so much like us, he lowered his voice. She wants to be leader too. Doesn't every apprentice want to be leader one day? Oakheart asked airily. Does that mean you've changed your mind about wanting to be leader now that you're a warrior? Crooked Paw teased. Never! Oakheart's eyes flashed, and he quickened his pace, skimming the snow with long strides as he followed his clanmates up the slope. Come on! I'll race you back to camp! Crooked Paw blinked open his eyes. He stared into the dark forest, surprised to find himself dreaming. After the gathering, too excited to sleep, he'd stared for ages through a small crack in the den wall at the moonlight sparkling on the snowy clearing. His mind was whirling with new pelts and scents and possibilities. So you've moved among the other clans, Maple Shade's mew sounded through the mist. She slid from the shadows and faced him. What did you think? Crooked Paw switched his tail. It was great! His paws itched with excitement. I talked to a Thunder Clan apprentice. It was like talking to a clanmate. Maple Shade's eyes blazed. Don't ever say that. But she was just like me. Crooked Paw tipped his head to one side. I wonder what it's like to live in a forest and eat mice. Maple Shade's breath bathed his nose. Her muzzle was a whisker from his as she snarled. River Clan is the only clan that should concern you. The other clans are no more than dust and beetles. Did you forget your promise? Crooked Paw shook his head, startled by her fury. Of course not, he mewed. I'll always put my clan above everything. Then start practicing your moves. She backed away and watched as Crooked Paw reared and began to swipe at the air. Reach, Maple Shade called. Crooked Paw staggered as he stretched farther with each swipe. Stay up, Maple Shade growled as he started to falter, his legs aching with effort. Crooked Paw gritted his teeth and swiped again at thin air. Through the pain, he felt himself growing stronger, perfectly balanced and more powerful than ever before. This was the training he needed to become a leader. He wondered if Blue Paw was being trained in Star Clan as well. What about Oakheart? Would he meet them here one night, or was this his destiny alone? His promise to Maple Shade rang in his ears. I will be loyal to my clan above everything. What I want doesn't matter. The clan must always come first. Chapter 14 Let all cats old enough to swim gather to hear my words. Crooked Paw straightened at Hailstar's call. 
He dragged his numb paw from the water, hooking out the minnow he'd been groping for and dropping it beside two others that he'd caught. He'd been fishing through a narrow ice hole among the reeds. With the river frozen, prey was growing scarce, and he'd promised Cedar Pelt he'd find some minnows before he settled down to share tongues with his clanmates. Leaving his catch, he scrambled, skidding for the shore. Snow flumped down from the bulrushes as he pushed among the thawing stems. What did Hailstar want? The sun was sinking, turning the pale sky pink. Crooked Paw ached all over, sore from a night's training with maple shade and stiff from spending the day hunting birds in the willow copse with cedar pelt. At least it looked as though the cold weather was loosening its grip. In the two nights since the gathering, the air had lost its aching chill. The river would be flowing again soon. He slithered from the reeds and hurried over the softening snow to the edge of the clearing. Oakheart trotted to meet him. There you are. What's up? Crooked Paw glanced at Hailstar. The River Clan leader paced the head of the clearing, hackles high. His eyes glittered. Shellheart stood behind him, tail flicking stiffly. Oakheart ducked close to Crooked Paw. I don't know. Hailstar has been meeting with Shellheart, Rippleclaw, and Timberfur all afternoon. Rippleclaw and Timberfur sat like rocks at the side of the clearing. Timberfur blinked, his gaze unreadable. Rippleclaw was coolly watching a blackbird flitting from bush to bush on the far bank. They even called for Brambleberry, Oakheart whispered. Is someone sick? Oakheart shrugged. Birdsong's got a cough and Bright Sky's been sneezing since the gathering, but that's all. Beetlenose padded lazily from the fallen tree. Petal Dust raced past him and stopped beside Crooked Paw. What's happening? Beetlenose caught up. Maybe he's going to change Crooked Paw's name again he suggested, to Scarpaw. He stared at Crooked Paw's muzzle. You seem to have a fresh scratch every day. Crooked Paw shrugged. I train hard. Volclaw darted from the dirt place tunnel. What did I miss? He panted. Nothing yet, Petal Dust reassured him. The clan's still gathering. Troutclaw and Tanglewhisker had reached the clearing. Birdsong peered from the elder's den, her eyes bright with fever. Dens rattled around the fallen tree as rainflower, echo mist, and mud fur slid out. Lake shine, soft wing, and shimmer pelt clustered together at the edge of the clearing, ears pricked. Pike tooth, owl fur, and otter splash paced beside them. Cedar pelt slid from the sedges, his fur ruffled, padded across the clearing, and sat beside Whitefang. Brambleberry crouched outside Fallowtail's den. Come on, she coaxed. River Clan needs all its warriors. Fallowtail poked her head out. What's going on? Come in here. Brambleberry guided her to the edge of the clearing and nodded to Hailstar. We saw Thunder Clan at the gathering, the River Clan leader began. Leaf Bear has left them hungry, as usual. Murmurs of satisfaction rumbled around the clearing. They look weak, Hailstar continued. While we are strong, at sunset, we take back Sunning Rocks. Alfer twitched his ears. How? Are we just going to move the markers again? Hailstar lashed his tail. We'll do more than that. The only markers we'll leave will be Thunder Clan's blood. About time! Otter Splash called. White Fang, hardly visible against the snow, showed his teeth. I'll shred any Thunder Clan cat I get my claws on. Hailstar nodded to the white warrior. Thunder Clan won't forget this day. What's the plan? Lakeshine asked. A battle patrol will occupy Sunning Rocks and wait for ThunderClan. What if they don't come? Shimmer Pelt meowed. They'll come, Rippleclaw stepped forward. ThunderClan always acts strong when they're too weak to fight. Timberfur plucked at the ground. It'll be an easy victory. One we deserve, Hailstar's eyes blazed. We've put up with ThunderClan's arrogance for long enough. Sunning Rocks is ours. The clan's cheer sent Rippleclaw's blackbird panicking into the sky. Beetlenose reared and swiped at the air. I'm going to bring home some ThunderClan fur. Petal Dust bristled. We've never fought before, she mewed. Crooked Paw nudged her. But we've trained, he reminded her. We know what to do. Petal Dust lifted her chin. I'll fight to the death if I have to. Cedar Pelt turned his head. Don't be silly, he meowed sharply. We're fighting to defend territory, not our clan. White Fang purred. I remember my first battle, he sighed. 
I was ready to take on every cat in Wind Clan. Were you scared? Petaldust's eyes widened. Of course. White Fang wrapped his tail over his paws. I'm not stupid. Battles are dangerous. Cedar Pelt nodded. Just remember the warrior code and you'll be fine. Beetlenose sniffed. Let's hope Thunder Clan remembers the warrior code, he meowed. They didn't let it stop them from attacking Wind Clan in their nests. Shellheart, Hailstar nodded to his deputy. Call the names of the cats who will join the battle patrol. Shellheart lifted his chin. Timberfur, Rippleclaw, Alfur, Otter Splash. The warriors padded to the head of the clearing. Crooked Paul leaned forward as his father went on. Oakheart, Beetlenose, Petal Dust, White Fang, Shimmerpelt, Softwing. Crooked Paul watched his brother pad away. Pike Tooth, Rainflower, Volclaw, Cedar Pelt, and Crooked Paul. Crooked Paul lashed his tail excitedly and darted after Cedar Pelt. Wait! Brambleberry blocked his path. Please stay here! The medicine cat's eyes were dark with worry. Why? Crooked Paul stared at her, bewildered. I'm strong now. You said it yourself. Bigger than Beetle Nose, and my jaw is as strong as a pike's. She shook her head. Please stay in camp and miss my first battle? Beetle Nose and the Oakheart were already heading out of camp. He had to catch up. Brambleberry looked away, her fur spiking. Crooked Paw narrowed his eyes. You don't have to worry about me anymore. I'm ready for this. I'm not staying behind, he growled. He had to go. He'd promised Mapleshade he'd fight for his clan above everything. This was his first chance to prove he had the makings of a great leader. He marched past Brambleberry and ducked through the sedge tunnel. Outside camp, the patrol was pounding along the shore. As Crooked Paw jumped down the bank, he saw them head out onto the ice. He caught up with them as they crossed the frozen river, his claws throwing up a shower of sparkling crystals, and stopped beside them at the foot of sunning rocks, where snow drifted against the stone. Ready? Hailstar surveyed the patrol, eyes dark. Ready, Shellheart answered for them. Crooked Paw's belly tightened. He flexed his claws as his clanmates started to climb the rock face. Cedar Pelt ran his tail along Crooked Paw's spine. Be careful, and remember what I taught you and everything Maple Shade taught me. He hoped she was watching. He'd show her what a great leader he was going to be. Good luck, Cedar Pelt swarmed up the rock. Crooked Paw reached up and hooked his claws into a crack. Pushing off with his hind legs, he swung himself up, catching the next claw hold and the next until he'd reached the top of the rock. The fiery glare of the setting sun lit the stone. Beyond sunning rocks stood the forest, dark and silent. Crooked Paw hauled himself over the edge and joined his clanmates. They wove restlessly around one another, their growls echoing on the rock. Rainflower caught his eye. I've asked Oakheart to keep an eye on you. No need, Crooked Paw turned away, avoiding her gaze, frightened at the coldness he might find there. Then he stiffened. A bush trembled between the trees below the rocks. Had they been spotted? Hailstar nodded to Shellheart. Prepare the battle line. His gaze swept over Beetlenose, Petal Dust, and Volclaw. This is your first battle, he glanced at Oakheart and Crooked Paw. This won't be the only opportunity you get to prove you are great warriors. Don't take any chances, and good luck. Shellheart flicked his tail, and River Clan spread out along the rock. Crooked Paw backed into place between Oakheart and Shimmerpelt. He glanced down the line, pride rising in his chest. The River Clan warriors stood, pelts bushed, the setting sun firing their fur till they shone like Star Clan warriors. Hailstar walked along the line, which straightened as he passed. Then he took his place in the middle and glared into the shadowy trees. Crooked Paw pricked his ears. Paws were thrumming the forest floor. Oakheart's claws scratched the stone. Good luck, Crooked Paw, he breathed. Shimmerpelt's pelt spiked. They're coming! The thrumming grew louder, like wind roaring through branches. Crooked Paw swallowed as the Thunderclan patrol broke from the trees. Eyes blazing, fur spiked, they pulsed rage. In the middle of battle, there's no time to think. Cedar Pelt's words rang in his mind. You just react. Now he understood. His fur bushed and his hiss rose in his throat as the Thunderclan patrol faced River Clan. Hailstar stepped forward. 
An ancient wrong has been put right, he yelled. These rocks are ours again. Pine Star padded up the sloping rock, his eyes no more than slits. Never, he drew back his lips. ThunderClan, attack! As ThunderClan surged forward, Pine Star lunged for Hailstar, and the two leaders fell, rolling across the stone. Oakheart plunged into the snarling, spitting mass of warriors, breaking through and turning on a black and white tom, a yowl of fury piercing the battle cries. Crooked Paul pressed his ears flat, shocked by the shrieks. As fear and rage merged, he spun around as his clanmates fell tumbling into combat. Confused and scared, he had no idea where to start. Then paws slammed into him, sending him rolling. Twisting, his claws scraped the rock. He found his paws, but only for a moment. A vicious blow to the cheek sent him spinning. Rage flared in his belly. Maple Shade's mew sounded in his ear. Fight! He turned and reared up. A ginger tom spat at him, back arched, paw raised, ready to deal another mighty blow. Crooked Paul knocked his paw aside and swiped the tom's muzzle with such force it sent them both reeling backward. Staggering on his hind paws, Crooked Paul felt the rock disappear from underneath him. With a yelp, he fell. Stone scraping his pelt as he tumbled down the side of sunning rocks and landed in the snow beneath. Stiff with shock, he fought for breath. Frog dung! Anger pulsed in his paws. He looked up the sheer rock face. The pink sky arced above, strangely calm above the shriek of battle. He had to help his clanmates. He darted along the foot of the rock, skidding around the corner to where he knew he'd find enough paw holds to haul himself up. A blue-gray pelt blocked his way. ThunderClan's stench bathed his tongue. An enemy warrior. He stumbled to a halt as the ThunderClan cat whirled to face him. Blue Paw. Was that relief in her eyes? Thanks, Star Clan, she sighed. What would Maple Shade say? The other clans are no more than dust and beetles. This was his chance to prove he was loyal to RiverClan above everything. So what if he'd spoken to this cat at a gathering? There was no truce now. You're on our territory, Crooked Paw dropped into a crouch, eyes narrowed to slits. We're enemies now, he hissed. Blue Paw blinked. She was surprised. Dumb cat. Crooked Paw sprang forward and knocked her into the snow. Before she could move, he grabbed her shoulders and churned his hind paws against her spine. Yowling, she twisted her head back, clamping her jaws around his forepaw. She bit down hard. Crooked Paw yelped. He kicked her away, pain searing his paw. Blue Paw tumbled, screeching down the shore toward the icy river. Crooked Paw licked at his wound, the fierce sting of it making him feel sick. Then he heard snow swish and saw a flash of blue fur. Blue Paw crashed into him with a howl of rage. Shocked, he staggered, and Blue Paw spun around and nipped his hind leg. She turned again and nipped his forepaw, then reared up and lunged at him sinking her teeth deep into his scruff. You snake heart! Energy shot like lightning through Crooked Paw. She was trying to drag him backward. Stupid furball! He dug in his claws and thrashed his head from side to side. Flinging her off, he turned and spat. Don't expect mercy from me! Panic lit her eyes, and she reared up again, swiping blindly. He had her. Lifting his four paws, he met her blow for blow, she staggered, trying to balance, while he kept swiping steadily, using the move he'd practiced over and over until it seemed as easy as fishing. She caught his muzzle with a claw, but he hit back, slicing her ear, feeling it tear beneath his claws. Run away! He knew he could beat her back to ThunderClan land if he wanted. A yowl sounded behind them. Snowpaw! Bluepaw's eyes sparked as her sister darted beside her. Crooked Paw growled as Snowpaw plunged forward and began swiping alongside her clanmate. Fielding blows from two pairs of paws, Crooked Paw fought harder, but the blows kept coming, relentless and fast. His hind legs began to weaken, his muscles screamed to stop. Claws raked his muzzle, then his ears, then his cheek. The flurry of paws was too fast to match. He started to back away, his hind paws slipping on the snow. Then Snowpaw ducked and bit his hind leg. It collapsed beneath him. Frog dung!
Crooked Paw dropped onto all fours, growling, and lunged for the two cats, trying to get between them and split their attack. But Snowpaw darted underneath him. Pain ripped his belly as she raked him with thorn-sharp claws. More claws sank into his shoulders. Blue Paw was on his back. Panic rising, he tried to shake her off while scrambling away from Snowpaw, but Snowpaw rolled and knocked out his hind legs. Tumbling, Crooked Paw yowled with rage. Blue Paw was clinging on like a burr. He felt his pelt shredding beneath her churning paws as he rolled down the bank. Agony gripped him, blood roaring in his ears. Flinging Blue Paw off, he dived for the frozen river and hurtled across the ice. Racing for the bank, he exploded through the bushes, relieved to smell river clan scent bathe his tongue. A yowl split the air. Forward, Thunder Clan! Blue Paw and Snow Paw were staring up at Sunning Rocks, ears pricked with excitement. They ducked against the rock as River Clan warriors began to plunge down the cliff and charge across the river. Crooked Paw watched in shock as Hailstar hurtled past him, leaving blood in his trail. Otter Splash and Shimmer Pelt thundered after him, the rest of the patrol at their heels. River Clan is retreating? Shellheart, Rippleclaw, and Timberfur were pounding the ice on the far side of the river, smashing it with their hind paws. As Crooked Paw stared, they broke open a channel of icy water and swam hard for the far shore. Thunderclan streamed down the rocks in pursuit, slithering to a clumsy halt at the edge of the racing water. The broken ice meant there was no way for them to follow. Mousehearts! A mottled warrior growled as Shellheart dived through the bushes on Riverclan's side of the river. Crooked Paw, Shellheart pulled up sharply. Are you okay? Crooked Paw straightened and lifted his chin. I'm fine, Shellheart frowned. He must have fought like a warrior. He leaned forward and licked Crooked Paw's blood-soaked cheek. Crooked Paw ducked away, wincing. Come on, Shellheart nudged him toward camp. You're going to need some herbs on those scratches. You ordered us to retreat! Rippleclaw stared, dumbfounded at Shellheart. How could you do that? Shellheart was padding among his clanmates, checking injuries, doling out praise and encouragement to the battered warriors. Dawn colored the sky, and birds were beginning to sing in the bushes outside camp. Crooked Paw crouched beside Oakheart, his pain easing as Brambleberry's herbs soaked into his wounds. We had no choice, Shellheart meowed. Timberfur shifted, wincing, onto his other side. But Hailstar told us ThunderClan was weak. We were winning! Lakeshine paused from smoothing her long gray and white fur. It was smeared with blood and fragments of herb. White Fang sighed. If only Stormtail hadn't turned up with a second patrol. Rippleclaw cut him off. Why didn't Hailstar think of that? He's not a mind reader, Shellheart snapped. Timberfur growled. But he's a leader. Leaders should know how to win battles. He glared toward the medicine den. Hailstar's wounds had been deep. When Brambleberry couldn't stop the bleeding in the clearing, Shellheart and Alpha had carried the half-conscious leader to her den. Shut up! Petaldust's eyes flared. A long scratch traced from her forehead to her muzzle, and her tortoiseshell pelt was clumped with blood. Hillstar could be losing a life! Crookedpaw got to his paws. His wounds burned like fire. Oakheart looked up. Where are you going? I want to take fresh kill to Brambleberry. He glanced at his paws. Truthfully, he was more interested in finding out how Hailstar was so he could reassure Petaldust and Volclaw. They were clearly worried about their father. Even Beetlenose wasn't boasting for a change. She's been busy all night. She must be hungry. But the fresh kill pile's empty, Okar pointed out. I know where there are some minnows. He padded carefully through the reed bed. The ice creaked beneath his paws. It would be gone in a day or so. He quickly caught a few minnows in his jaws. Back on shore, he crossed the clearing. Rainflower was licking her wounds. She looked up as he passed. Well done, Crooked Paw, she meowed, and returned to her washing. Crooked Paw's fur prickled with surprise. Rainflower had praised him. His heart lifted. Ducking through the sedge tunnel into Brambleberry's den, he dropped the fish at the medicine cat's paws. How is he? Hailstar lay curled in a nest beside the wall of the den. Echo Mist sat beside him, lapping his pelt. The River Clan leader's fur was dull and matted, his flanks hardly moving. He stopped bleeding, Brambleberry murmured, but he lost a lot of blood.
Echo Mist stiffened. He's not breathing. Brambleberry darted to the nest and pressed her ear to Hailstar's flank. She sat up slowly. Crooked Paw shivered as silence gripped the den. Brambleberry broke it with a sigh as Hailstar took a sudden shuddering gasp. He lost a life, she mewed softly. Echo Mist's eyes glistened. Then he's on his ninth, she breathed. Brambleberry touched the she-cat's cheek with her muzzle. I'm afraid so. She glanced at Crooked Paw. You'd better go. Crooked Paw nodded and headed for the entrance. Thanks for the fish, Brambleberry called after him. Crooked Paw squeezed into the clearing. Rainflower was padding stiffly to her den. Oakheart rested his nose on his paws, his eyes closed. Tangle Whisker was carrying a lump of snow in his jaws. He dropped it beside Shimmer Pelt, who began lapping at it thirstily. None of them knew that their leader had lost a life in the failed battle for Sunning Rocks, just as Petal Dust feared. It wasn't Crooked Paw's place to tell them. Brambleberry would do that, or Hailstar himself, once he had recovered. If only I'd fought better. Maple Shade will never believe I'm worthy of being clan leader now. Crooked Paw felt a rush of frustration. Next time I'll fight like a Star Clan warrior. Next time, I won't let my clan down. Chapter 15 Stop! Maple Shade yelled. But I haven't done it perfectly yet. Crooked Paw lunged forward again, his belly brushing the ground. He twisted, thrusting out his hind paws with a grunt of effort. In the days since the battle, he'd practiced harder than ever. Maple Shade ignored him. Stop! I have to get this right. Crooked Paw scrambled to his paws. I'm never going to be beaten again. You must wake up, Crooked Paw, Maple Shade hissed. Something's happening. Crooked Paw stared at her in alarm. Is the clan in trouble? Wake up. Crooked Paw blinked open his eyes. He scrambled to his paws, heart racing. The apprentice's den was dark. He could hardly see the walls. Paws pricking, he slipped into the clearing and looked up at the sky. The moon was no more than a claw scratch. Dawn was lighting the distant moorland. The thaw, which had followed the defeat at Sunning Rocks, had left the camp muddy. The reeds drooped, feigning death. The snow had melted, revealing moss once more. It squelched under paw as Crooked Paw padded toward the reed bed. He peered through the stiff stems, tasting the air. Hailstar's scent hung there. Timber firs, too. Crooked Paw followed their trail, picking out the fresh scent of otter splash, owl fur, and ripple claw as he neared a gap in the sedge. They'd left camp recently. Crooked Paw ducked, ready to follow. Just then, a screech tore the air. Bristling, Crooked Paw spun around. It had come from the other side of the river. A yowl followed it. Otter splash! Crooked Paw darted across the clearing and leaped onto the fallen tree. Weaving past the dens, he headed along the jutting branch until he was above the reeds. His gaze followed the sliding river far upstream to the distant bank. Otter Splash and Owlfur were pelting down the slope from WindClan territory. They skimmed the low bushes with long strides. Rippleclaw and Timberfur followed. Dark bundles swung from their jaws. Crookedpaw's heart skipped a beat as he heard mewling. The kits! They had the kits! Hailstar pounded after them, a wind clan warrior spitting at his heels. Reed feather! Crooked Paw recognized the bristling pelt. Four snarling clanmates sped alongside him. Timberfur and Rippleclaw were nearing the river. Crooked Paw gripped the bark underneath his claws as the camp stirred behind him. What's happening? Who's yowling? Dens rustled and paws hurried over wet moss. Oakheart scuttled along the branch and crouched behind him. What is it? Just watch. Crooked Paw kept his gaze fixed on the fleeing patrol. Get into the river! Hailstar's yowl rang loud in the dawn air. Timberfur and Rippleclaw sprang off the shore and plunged into the shallows. Willow Kit squealed. It's cold! Help! Gray Kit was shrieking. Hailstar slowed and turned to face Reedfeather. The Wind Clan warrior stopped a whisker from Hailstar's nose. His clanmates charged past him to the river's edge. You can't steal my kits! Hailstar glanced over his shoulder toward Rippleclaw and Timberfur, who stood belly deep in the water. His eyes lit with triumph. We already have. 
Spitting, Reed Feathers struck the River Clan leader with a blow so fierce it sent him crashing against a rock. Crooked Paw's breath stopped. Hailstar lay still. Get up! Get up! Had the River Clan leader given his final life to save the kits? Reed Feather charged for the shore, following his clanmates. He paused at the river's edge as the others waded in, snarling. Otter Splash and Owlfur turned in the shallows and met their pursuers with a flurry of vicious swipes. Knocking one Wind Clan warrior back, Owlfur spun around and sent another floundering out of his depth with a mighty blow. Otter Splash dived under the belly of a dark tabby Tom and sent him lurching off balance with the heave of her shoulders. As their clanmates held off Wind Clan, Ripple Claw and Timberfur plunged toward River Clan, necks stretched as they held the kits above water. Reed Feather stared wildly as the River Clan warriors staggered from the river and dropped the kits on the marshy bank. His clanmates struggled back to shore on the Wind Clan side and hauled themselves out. Reed Feather turned to them in dismay. We can't give up. Those are my kits. Without waiting for an answer, he whirled around and leaped into the river. Give them back, he screeched. Behind him, Hailstar moved. He struggled to his paws and pelted after Reed Feather. With a grunt of effort, he jumped onto the Wind Clan deputy's back, sending him flailing forward into the river. As Reed Feather surfaced, spluttering, Hailstar lunged forward with his front paws outstretched and thrust the Wind Clan warrior beneath the water. His eyes glowed, reflecting the rising sun as he held Reedfeather down. The other Wind Clan warriors backed away up the slope, their eyes as round as owls. Bubbles rose around Hailstar's paws. Reedfeather was fighting for his life. Let him go. Crooked Paul leaned forward, trembling. Don't kill him. The kids are safe. Hailstar! Hailstar, stop! Alpha splashed to his leader's side. You're killing him! Hailstar gazed at his clanmates, dazed. He released his grip and staggered backward. Owlfur tugged at Reedfeather's pelt. Help me get him out, he spluttered. Hailstar darted forward and grabbed Reedfeather's scruff. Together they dragged him to the shore on Windclan's side. Weak with relief, Crookedpaw hurried toward the kits. Rippleclaw pressed against Willow Kit while Timberfur lapped at Grey Kit's dripping fur. The kit's gaze was fixed on the far shore where Hailstar and Owlfur leaned over their father's limp body. Is he dead? Willow Kit wailed. Owlfur began to rub Reedfeather's chest. Should I get Brambleberry? Crookedpaw offered. Rippleclaw looked up, his eyes dark. It'd be too late. Suddenly, Reedfeather coughed, twisting and vomiting river water. He's alive! Willow Kit's eyes shone. Then she turned and stared at Crooked Paw. Is he going to take us home now? This is your home, Fallowtail exploded out of the reeds. She skidded to a stop and stared, huge-eyed at her kits. You've grown, she breathed. You've grown so big, her mew cracked. Fallowtail, Grey Kit ducked away from Timberfur and raced to her mother, rubbing her muzzle along Fallowtail's jaw and purring loud enough to wake the birds. Willow Kit rushed to join her, tucking herself under Fallowtail's belly. On the far shore, the Wind Clan warriors were helping Reed Feather up the slope. His drenched fur clung to his bony shape, and he was limping badly. Owl fur slid into the water and swam toward home. Hailstar followed. Crookedpaw shivered. Just for a moment, Hailstar had wanted to kill Reed Feather, not for his own sake. Reed Feather had done nothing to him personally but for the sake of his clan, because Hailstar truly believed the kits belonged to River Clan. Will I ever fight like that? A voice breathed in Crooked Paw's ear. Maple Shade. Her mew was fierce. One day, it will be your turn to show your clan you are worthy of being their leader, Crooked Paw. I have faith in you, young warrior. Chapter 16 Willow Paw! Gray Paw! The cheers of the clan rang in the golden morning air as they welcomed their newest apprentices. Fallowtail called loudest of all, her blue eyes misting. Crookedpaw purred. At last he'd have den mates. 
Willow Paw stood in the center of the clearing, her amber eyes shone, and her pale tabby coat reflected the rising sun. Her mentor, Owl Fur, touched his white splashed muzzle to Willow Paw's head, while Bright Sky patted proudly around her first apprentice, Gray Paw. Hailstar stepped back, chin high. Wind Clan's loss is our gain. In the two moons since the River Clan leader had led the patrol to rescue River Clan's youngest members, New Leaf had furred the stark branches of the willows with soft green buds. The reeds had lifted their snow crushed fronds and were thick with new growth, and the river was beginning to lose its biting chill. What are we going to do first? As the clan began to return to its duties, Willowpaw stared excitedly at Alfur. Alfur glanced conspiratorially at Cedarpelt. What? Crookedpaw knew when his mentor was keeping a secret. Cedarpelt's pelt was pricking. Purring, the brown warrior padded toward Alfur. Crookedpaw scampered after him. Is something going on? We're going to the Moonstone to share with Star Clan, Cedarpelt told him. I wanted to take you there before, but I thought you'd prefer to share the experience with Denmates. I have Denmates, Crooked Paw circled his mentor excitedly. And we're going to the Moonstone. Gray Paw pricked her ears. We're going to? Cedar Pelt nodded. Yes. Really? Willow Paw's gaze glittered anxiously. It'll mean traveling through Wind Clan territory, she mewed. What if they steal us back? Crooked Paul cocked his head, surprised. Would you let them? Of course not. Willow Paul lashed her tail. Gray Paul fluffed out her fur. Wind Clan follows the warrior code, okay? She reminded her sister. They'd never stop us from traveling to the Moonstone. She and Willow Paul exchanged a glance, and Crooked Paul wondered what memories they were sharing. They'd seemed happy to return to their mother's clan, but they never criticized Wind Clan who had cared for and nurtured them for a whole moon. You must have been disgusting, Beetlenose had goaded them more than once, eating rabbit. Even Volclaw had joined in. Weren't you cold, he wondered. How could a heather den keep out the wind, especially up on the moorland? It never stops up there. But Graypaw and Willowpaw had just shrugged. They treated us well, but we're glad to be home, was all they'd ever say. Crooked Paul respected their careful silence. Ignore him, he told them. Beetle Nose likes to get under other cats' pelts. He'd settled down beside Willow Kit one evening while the clan was sharing tongues. Beetle Nose had been calling her rabbit breath all afternoon, and her pelt was still spiked. When I was on the farm, I hunted mice, he told her quietly. I got so used to the taste it was hard eating fish again. He wanted her to know that he understood what it was like to come back, to have her loyalty questioned. Even Oakheart teased me about being more like a ThunderClan cat than a RiverClan cat. She blinked at him. Really? Really. He purred and touched his muzzle to her ear. Don't worry, they'll get over it. But that was last moon. Now he was just glad they were paws, not only because he'd have denmates, but because they'd have a chance to show their loyalty to their true clan. When are we leaving? He paced around Cedar Pelt. Go to Brambleberry, Cedar Pelt ordered. She has traveling herbs ready for you. Graypaw screwed up her nose. You'll be thankful for them by sun high, Alfer told her. We have a long way to go. Crookedpaw raced for Brambleberry's den, but Willowpaw darted ahead of him and slipped through the entrance first. Three piles of herbs were laid out on the den floor. Brambleberry was pulling stale supplies from a gap in the reeds. I'm glad New Leaf's here, she muttered. There's hardly any goodness left in this colt's foot, and we'll be needing poppy seeds before long. Crooked Paul sniffed at one of the herb piles she'd prepared. It smelled sour. Do we have to chew them, or can we just swallow them whole? Brambleberry dropped a paw full of shriveled mallow on the floor. Swallow them whole, she advised. It'll slow down their effect till you really need it. Closing his eyes, Crooked Paul gulped down the herbs. He shuddered. Even without chewing, they left a bitter taste on his tongue. Yuck! Gray Paw made a face as she swallowed hers. Willow Paw winced but didn't complain. How far is it to the Moonstone? She asked Brambleberry when she licked her lips. You'll be there by nightfall if you keep up a good pace, Brambleberry shrugged. 
The journey's nothing once you get used to it. She traveled at every half moon with the other medicine cats to share tongues with Star Clan. The worst bit is Mother Mouth, her pelt rippled. It's very dark, and you need to trust Star Clan to guide your paws. She blinked at the three apprentices. Stay close to your mentors. Willow Paul wrapped her tail tight around her forepaws. What's the moonstone like? Are Star Clan cats friendly? Graypaw added. Even the warriors from other clans? The moonstone is beautiful, Brambleberry sighed. And Star Clan is wise. Her gaze fixed on Crooked Paw. Listen carefully to what they tell you, she warned. Let them guide your paws onto the right path. Crooked Paw swallowed. Why had she singled him out? Did she think his paws were on the wrong path? Hurry up. Brambleberry began to herd them toward the entrance. You need to get there by moon high. Why? Graypaw mewed as Brambleberry nosed her from the den. Brambleberry turned back to her supplies. You'll see. Cedarpelt, Bright Sky, and Owl Fur were waiting by the entrance. Crooked Paw hurried to join them. Don't you need herbs? We had some earlier, Bright Sky explained. Alfur nodded to Willowpaw. Are you ready? Yes. Her voice suddenly sounded very small. Was she overwhelmed, traveling all the way to the Moonstone on her first day as an apprentice? Crooked Paw felt a surge of excitement. He'd traveled part of this journey before, but now he wasn't alone. He was with his clanmates, and if he had a chance to dream at the Moonstone, he'd probably meet the whole of Star Clan, and not just Maple Shade. The cats kept to the edge of Wind Clan territory, wary of patrols. I know Wind Clan has honorable warriors, Cedar Pelt told Graypaw. But there's no need to stir up memories by marching you right past their camp. Crooked Paw couldn't help wondering if it was Wind Clan's memories or Gray Paws that Cedar Pelt was frightened of stirring up. He was relieved when they reached the Wind Clan scent line. Beyond it, the world seemed to open like a water lily. The wide valley between the moors and high stones was green with new leaf growth. The sun warmed Crooked Paw's back as they padded along the hedgerows that bordered the two leg meadows. From time to time, he recognized a familiar scent on his tongue, and for the first time in moons, he longed to taste mouse. Crooked Paw, Cedar Pelt's call startled him. He suddenly realized that he'd veered off the track they'd been following and was staring through a beech hedge into a furrowed field of mud. Keep up, Cedar Pelt ordered. Crooked Paw raced after his clanmates. Was that Mitzi's cornfield? He glanced sideways through the hedge as he caught up with Willow Paw. Where was the golden corn? Then he remembered the giant corn-eating monster and bristled. Willow Paul looked at him. Are you okay? It must be weird coming back here after so long. I'm fine. She slowed her pace and they fell behind the others. You're thinking about Fleck, aren't you? Weren't you thinking about Wind Clan when you were traveling through the moorland? He countered. Her gaze flicked away. Is there anything wrong with that? Crooked Paw sighed. It's possible to care about cats outside the clan and be loyal. Is it? Crooked Kit! A loud mew made them both turn. A black cat stood a few tail lengths behind them on the track. Shut! Crooked Paw gasped. The young she-cat ran toward him. She was as big as Willow Paw now. I didn't think you'd come back. We're going to the Moonstone, Crooked Paw explained. Cedar Pelt's growl rumbled behind them. What's going on? Crooked Paw whirled around, heart lurching. Was Cedar Pelt going to chase Soot off? I, it's just a cat I knew when... He stammered to a halt as Cedar Pelt glowered at him. Wow, Soot breathed. A real warrior, she stared at Cedar Pelt. You're so big. Her green eyes were wide. Cedar Pelt growled softly. Crooked Paw stood between his mentor and Soot and met Cedar Pelt's gaze. She's hardly more than a kit. There was a warning in his mew. She's not doing any harm. Cedar Pelt narrowed his eyes. Don't be long, he muttered, and stalked back to where Alfer, Bright Sky, and Gray Paw were waiting farther up the track. Leave them alone, Willow Paw, he called. It's bad enough having one apprentice hanging out with farm cats. Crooked Paw ignored the jibe. How are you? 
he purred to Soot. How are Fleck and Mitzi and Piper and Magpie and Mist? Fleck's fine. Soot wound around Crooked Paw, brushing against him and purring. So are Mitzi and Piper. Then she paused. I think Mist and Magpie are okay. Some two legs came and took them away. Fleck says they were going to catch mice on another farm. What about you? Are you a warrior yet? Crooked Paw shook his head. No, but I'm an apprentice. I'm Crooked Paw now. Soot blinked. Is that good? It's great. Hurry up, Cedar Pelt called. I've got to go. Crooked Paw felt a tug in his chest. I'll tell Fleck and Mitzi I saw you, Soot promised. They'll be pleased you're okay. Tell them I said. He reached for the right words, something that would let them know he missed them and he was grateful, but he was also happy to be back with his clan. Soot's eyes glowed. I understand, she mewed. I'll tell them. Cedar Pelt was lashing his tail. Come on! Crooked Paul began to back away from Soot. I'm really glad I saw you. Me too. The young cat waved her tail as Crooked Paw turned and sprinted to catch up with his clanmates. Everything okay? Willow Paw asked in a whisper as he fell in beside her. Crooked Paw nodded, one eye on his mentor's flicking tail. It's not up to Cedar Pelt to tell me who I can be friends with. Those cats made me feel wanted when my clanmates didn't. I'm never going to forget that. High stones reared above them. The setting sun melted over its peaks. The last thunderpath had been the hardest to cross. The gaps between monsters so narrow that Willow Paw was still trembling from the mad dash across the slippery stone. Crooked Paw forced his pelt to lie flat, even though his heart was still racing. Bright Sky led them quickly away from the bitter stench up toward the foot of high stones. The earth was darker here, the grass coarser under paw, giving way to bare, rocky soil dotted with patches of clinging heather. Look! Willow Paw tilted her chin. Crooked Paw screwed up his eyes against the sun sliding down behind the peaks. As it disappeared, the shadowed slope lightened, and he could make out a square black hole yawning darkly beneath the stone archway. Gray Paw gasped. Is that Mother Mouth? Yes! Alfer climbed onto a wide, smooth stone and sat down. But we have to wait till nearly moon high before we go in. I'm hungry, Willow Paw complained. Bright Sky shook her head. No fish or birds here, she meowed sympathetically. Crooked Paw pricked his ears. There may be mice. He tasted the air. There was definitely a musky scent worth investigating. Cedar Pelt turned. Mice? They're easy to hunt. Crooked Paw enthused. Not as nice as fish, Bright Sky meowed, but I suppose they'll fill your belly. If you can catch one, Cedar Pelt snorted. Is that a challenge? Crooked Paw hurried away across the slope, ears scanning the gravelly earth for the scrabbling of tiny paws. He ducked behind a patch of heather and waited. The sky darkened and stars began to prick the sky. Crooked Paw's nose twitched. Mouse? He peered through the shadows. Something was shifting the pebbles farther along the slope. It smelled musky, but was making a lot of noise for a mouse. Suddenly, a pale, tabby shape sped past and leaped, skidding over the shale, sending pebbles cracking across the slope. Crooked Paw darted out from behind the heather and stared round-eyed as Willow Paw turned and lifted her head. A dead rabbit hung from her jaws. She carried it back to her clanmates. Crooked Paw stiffened. What would Owlfur say? River Clan cats didn't catch rabbits. He followed Willow Paw and climbed up onto the rock where his clanmates had settled. They sat staring at the dead rabbit, their fur twitching. Willow Paw shrugged. It's fresh kill. Gray Paw's nostrils flared as she breathed in its warm scent. Bright Sky mewed. I guess. Owlfur wrapped his tail tighter around his paws. If we're going to eat it, we should do it now. He looked up at the moon rising, fat and white in the sky. It's nearly time. They shared the rabbit between them, though no one commented on the taste. Crooked Paw secretly enjoyed the rich, meaty flavor, but he wasn't going to admit it. Gray Paw finished eating first. You must have been hungry. Bright Sky pushed her share toward her apprentice. 
You might as well have mine. As Greypaw gulped it down, Cedarpelt stood and stretched. Let's go. He began to pad up the slope toward Mothermouth. Owlfur fell in behind. Bright Sky got to her paws. Come on, she nudged Greypaw, who followed her, noisily chewing her last mouthful. Doesn't anything ruin your appetite? Bright Sky purred, shaking her head. You do realize you're about to meet Star Clan, don't you? Willowpaw's eyes sparkled with starlight. Crookedpaw flicked his tail toward her spine. Excited? Willowpaw nodded and bounded up the steep, stony slope. Crookedpaw's heart quickened as he trotted after her. As he neared the shadowy entrance, he shivered. Cold air, iced with the tang of stone, rolled from the mouth of the tunnel. Cedarpelt had paused and the others clustered around him. Ready? He gazed at his clanmates. They nodded, but no one spoke. Stay close. He slid into the night black shadow. Crooked Paul trotted after him. The tunnel sloped down into the darkness and the cold reached through his thick fur and into his bones. This air had never felt the sun. Crooked Paul gave up straining to see anything. He could hear Bright Sky's paw steps behind him and feel her breath on his tail. His whiskers brushed stone, and he veered away, careful not to crash into the wall. The tunnel bent, and the slope under his paws steepened. Suddenly the dank air freshened. Crookedpaw sniffed, relieved to smell the familiar world above. He could scent earth and grass and heather. There must be a hole in the roof of the tunnel. He looked up, searching for a patch of starlight in the blackness. Where are we? We're in the Moonstone Cave, Cedarpelt halted ahead of him and guided Crooked Paw forward with a flick of his tail. A distant drip echoed against the rock and he could hear his clanmates breathing. Willow Paw's pelt brushed his and Gray Paw's pads grazed the stone as they stood, waiting. Where is the Moonstone? Willow Paw whispered. Suddenly, in a flash more blinding than the setting sun, the cave lit up. Crookedpaw closed his eyes in surprise. Willowpaw recoiled against him. Wow, Graypaw breathed. Crookedpaw slowly opened his eyes. A huge rock loomed over him, glittering as though it were made of countless dewdrops. The moonstone. In the cold light reflecting from the stone, he could make out the shadowy edges of a high-roofed cavern. The moonstone rose up from the middle of the floor, three tail lengths high. Far above it, an opening in the roof revealed a small triangle of night sky. The moon was casting a beam of light through the hole down onto the moonstone, making it sparkle like a star. Cedar Pelt padded forward, his pelt bleached by the moonstone's glow. He crouched down beside the rock and touched it with his nose. Bright Sky did the same. Come on! Alfer beckoned the three apprentices forward. Crooked Paul went first. Willowpaw's breath trembled behind him. It'll be okay, he whispered to her. He lay down beside Cedar Pelt and touched his nose to the stone. The world shifted underneath his paws. Crooked Paul let out a cry as he found himself standing in the dark forest where he trained with maple shade. It wasn't the usual place they met. The muddy ground here was more sloping, and the trees were more tightly packed, but it was lit by the same eerie light that came from neither stars nor moon. Crooked Paw strained to see through the shadows. Welcome, Mapleshade stepped out of the trees. Where are the other Star Clan cats? Hope fluttered in Crooked Paw's chest. He turned his head, scanning the forest. Why don't you look for them? Mapleshade invited smoothly. Crooked Paul snapped his gaze back. Do you mean I can explore now? Mapleshade nodded. But stay close to me. Crooked Paul followed the orange and white warrior, his eyes wide. Is this really Star Clan's hunting grounds? He frowned. What did they hunt? There was no scent of prey, only the smell of decay. This is where the greatest cats come after they die. Mapleshade padded up the slope. And if you keep your promise, this is where you'll come one day. Crooked Paul blinked. Once I'm River Clan's leader? Not just River Clan's leader, Mapleshade turned to face him. The greatest leader the clans have ever known. 
but only if you keep your promise. A shadow moved between the trees at the corner of Crooked Paw's vision. He whipped his head around and saw a pelt moving through the half-light. Then he saw another and another. Slowly he realized the forest was filled with cats padding silently through the gloom. Crooked Paw narrowed his eyes. This wasn't exactly how he'd imagined Star Clan. Then he recognized a shaggy gray pelt shambling toward Maple Shade. Leave us alone, Maple Shade patted in front of the Tom, pushing him away with her tail. It's Goose Feather. Crooked Paw blinked in surprise as he recognized the chewed whiskers and ragged ears of the Thunder Clan medicine cat. What's he doing here? He's still alive. Goose Feather stood his ground. Is this the newcomer? His growl was rasping and deep. Crooked Paw stared at Maple Shade. Is Goose Feather dead? Are you? Maple Shade replied. I, I guess not. Crooked Paw peered past her, but the old medicine cat had disappeared. You must go back to your clanmates now, Maple Shade told him. They'll be waking from their dreams. Is that it? Wasn't he supposed to share tongues with his ancestors? Learn all kinds of wise stuff about being a warrior and how to achieve his destiny? I'm not ready. He fought to stay, digging his claws into the slimy earth as the forest began to fade around him. No! He woke, bristling with frustration. The cave was black. The moon had passed and the moonstone had faded to dull stone. Crooked Paw stood up, surprised to find that his muscles felt stiff. Had he been lying here all night? Was that dawn light seeping through the hole in the roof? Gray Paw and Bright Sky were getting to their paws beside him. Cedar Pelt was stretching while Alfur paced back and forth as if he couldn't wait to leave. Willow Paw? Crooked Paw mewed. The young apprentice was snoring, her head resting against the moonstone. Crooked Paw nudged her gently. The long journey must have worn her out. As Willow Paw opened her eyes, Crooked Paw wondered what vision she'd had. Had she met her Wind Clan ancestors? He shrugged. Even if Willow Paw had met every warrior in Star Clan, he guessed none of them had told her she'd be the greatest leader River Clan had ever known. Chapter 17 How was your trip to the Moonstone? Crooked Paw looked up from his meal as Hailstar stopped beside him. He scrambled to his paws. He felt rested after a good night's sleep, though his pads were still sore. It was great. If only he knew. I'm going to be, Hailstar cut into his thoughts. Walk with me. He led Crooked Paw out of camp and into the willow grove. What is it? Did Hailstar want to know about his vision? I just thought we should talk. Hailstar stopped beside a mossy log. Soft evening light filtered through the rustling leaves. Bees hummed sleepily among the wild flowers, and a blackbird was calling from the branches above their heads. Are you enjoying your apprenticeship? he asked. Crooked Paw nodded. It's great! He guessed the River Clan leader must have asked Oakheart, Beetlenose, Volclaw, and Petaldust the same question when they were still paws. Your journey to becoming a warrior has taken longer than most. Four seasons, Crooked Paw reminded him. Yes, the River Clan leader patted on, nodding. That must seem like a long time to a young cat. Yeah, Crooked Paw sighed. Are you jealous that your brother's already a warrior? Jealous? Crooked Paw blinked. No, Oakheart's a great warrior, and I'll be a great warrior too, he fluffed out his fur. One day? Is that all you want? Hailstar asked softly. To become a great warrior? What else is there? Crooked Paw wondered where these questions were leading. Was Hailstar about to make him a warrior? Excitement pricked beneath his pelt. I want to look after my clan. That's the most important thing in the world. Really? Hailstar halted and stared hard at Crooked Paw. Crooked Paw shifted his paws. Of course. Did Hailstar doubt him? He trained harder than any apprentice. Hailstar looked away. Brambleberry's worried. What's she worried about? What did she have to do with his apprenticeship? She mixed herbs, 
She didn't train warriors. Crooked Paul swallowed back his anger. I'll do any task you want, any assessment, fight any battle to show you I can be a great warrior. I'm sure you would, Hailstar narrowed his eyes. Without doubt. But being a warrior isn't just about courage and skill and being ready to fight battles. His mew trailed away. What is it about, then? Crooked Paul stared at his leader, but the old gray cat was padding away. What can I do to prove myself? Crooked Paul called after him. Hailstar didn't answer. He was slowly shaking his head, lost in his own thoughts. What did Brambleberry tell him? Crooked Paul raced back to camp. Whoa! Shellheart ducked out of his way as he charged through the sedge tunnel. What's up? Nothing. Crooked Paw stormed into the medicine den. Brambleberry looked up from the herbs she was mixing. Crooked Paw, is something wrong? Hillstar doubts I can be a warrior, Crooked Paw snapped. You told him there's something wrong with me. Is it because of my jaw? Brambleberry dusted the herbs from her paws. It has nothing to do with your jaw. Then why did you tell Hailstar you were worried about me? The medicine cat glanced at her paws. I worry about all the apprentices, she mumbled. Really? Crooked Paw's tail lashed. Is Hailstar going to ask Willow Paw if she's jealous of Gray Paw, or if she thinks there's more to being a warrior than fighting? Rambleberry didn't answer. I didn't think so, Crooked Paw growled. So what is it? What's different about me? I always trusted you. I thought we were friends. His belly tightened. What am I doing wrong? You tried to stop me from fighting in the battle, and you told me to listen to Star Clan when I went to the Moonstone. You think there's something wrong with me, don't you? He sat down, baffled. Have you had an omen about me? He was half joking, but the flash of fear in Brambleberry's eyes made him stiffen. What was it? He demanded. What have you seen? You wouldn't understand. She answered quickly. You, you have the chance to be a great warrior. She was searching for words. Like all River Clan cats, you just have to follow the right path. And I'm not following it now? He stared at her. But I'm training every day and every night. I'm being taught by Star Clan. You don't know anything, he snapped. If you did see an omen, you must have misread it. I am going to be a great warrior. He turned and stalked out of the den. He barged past Graypool, who was dragging a fish across the clearing, and raced away from the camp, hurtling blindly along the shore. Why did he bother training so hard for his clan when they doubted him? He'd prove them wrong. A moon passed, and the days grew longer and warmer. The river had begun to teem with fresh prey, and the clan feasted in the rosy glow of the setting sun. Shimmerpelt and Piketooth were sharing tongues beside the reed bed, grooming each other's fur on the back of their necks. White Fang was tucking into a fat carp beside them while Cedarpelt lay beside Lake Shine, his tail wrapped protectively across her swollen belly. She was expecting his kits and had given up warrior duties and moved to the nursery. Birdsong stretched. This would be a perfect evening for warming my bones on sunning rocks. The old she-cat looked wistfully out over the reed bed. Oakheart rolled onto his back. You can have what's left if you like. He pushed the remains of his fish toward Crooked Paw. I'm not hungry, Crooked Paw sat hunched, watching his clanmates share tongues in the late afternoon light. Softwing was stripping flesh from a bony trout. She called to Brambleberry, who was padding from her den. Do you want some? Fresh herb scent wafted around the medicine cat as she crossed the clearing. Thanks, she settled beside Softwing. Let me wash this water mint off my paws first. She began nibbling at the green-tinged fur between her claws. Crooked Paw scowled. Hailstar was lying beside Echo Mist, eyes half closed. Neither he nor Brambleberry had mentioned the omen again, but Crooked Paw guessed they were keeping an eye on him. He had to make them trust him. He had to prove he was loyal to River Clan. A dog barked in the distance. It was getting to be a familiar sound in the River Clan camp. The dog lived on the farm beside the meadow where two legs came in Greenleaf to live in little pelt dens, and it seemed to know that the cats were close by, almost within reach of its snapping jaws. Crooked Paw's whiskers twitched. Are Willow Paw and Gray Paw back from training? Not yet, 
Fallowtail padded to the entrance and peered through. Do you think they're okay? Shellhart, sitting beside his den, flipped over his carp. They're training by the beach cops, Oakhart sat up. The dog won't stray that far from its two-leg nest. Bright Sky and Alfur are with them. Timberfur was sharing fresh kill with Rippleclaw beneath the willow. They'll be fine. Crooked Paw scrambled to his paws. Why don't we chase the dog away? Hailstar sat up. Crooked Paw padded across the clearing. We could scare it, he lashed his tail. Shimmerpelt's fast. His mind was whirling. So Softwing. They could lure it from Two-Leg Place into the marsh meadow. We'd be waiting for it. We'd give it a shock that it won't forget in a hurry. The Dirt Place tunnel rustled and Beetle Nose padded out. Saving the whole clan on your own, he muttered as he passed Crooked Paw. Yeah, Crooked Paw shot back. What have you been doing? He ignored Beetle Nose's growl. I think it could work. So do I. White Fang jumped to his paws. Hailstar pushed away his fish and sat up. Let's do it now. Now? Cedar Pelt's pelt fluffed up. Now. The River Clan leader tasted the air. Before dark, he turned to Shimmerpelt. Are you quick enough to lure the dog toward the attack line without being caught? Shimmerpelt nodded. Softwing sprang to her paws. I am too. Good. Hailstar glanced around his clan. I'll head the attack patrol. Shellheart, you shadow Shimmerpelt and Softwing. Shellheart showed his teeth. If the dog gets within a whisker of them, I'll claw its eyes out. Hailstar nodded. Cedarpelt, White Fang, Ripple Claw, Beetlenose, Oak Heart, Otter Splash, Rainflower, and Pike Tooth. You'll join Crooked Paw in my patrol. Fallowtail stood up. I want to come too. Fine. Hailstar swished his tail as his clanmates gathered by the entrance. Then, with a nod, he pelted out of camp. Crooked Paw's heart was racing as they pounded along the track through the reeds. Hailstar led them up the slope and around the camp, doubling back toward the marsh meadow. They skirted the beech copse, which topped a hillock arching from the meadow like a pike's spine. Bright Sky was calling instructions to Gray Paw, and Crooked Paw could just see Willow Paw's ears as she peered over the top of the slope. Where are you going? Her call faded behind them as they crossed the meadow, weaving between the clumps of marsh grass and sedge, their paws splashing over the boggy ground. Crooked Paw felt Oakheart's pelt brush his. Nice plan, Crooked Paw. He puffed, matching Crooked Paw paw step for paw step as they raced after Hailstar. I just hope it works. Crooked Paw saw Hailstar pull up and swerved to a halt behind him. A two-leg fence separating two meadows was a few tail lengths away. Beyond it, the dog's fur flashed against the bright green grass as it darted from side to side, barking excitedly. Hailstar weaved between Shimmerpelt and Softwing. Are you sure you're up to this? Softwing flicked her tail. Of course. Shimmerpelt nodded. Shellheart patted around them. I'll run alongside, keeping up as much as I can, he promised. Hailstar turned to Crooked Paw. Have you thought about where the attack party should be? Beetlenose flexed his claws. Why are you letting an apprentice tell warriors what to do? It was his plan. Hailstar silenced the young Tom with a growl. And if it works, I won't be an apprentice for long. Crooked Paw pointed to a thicket of young willow trees behind them. We could climb those. The leaves will hide us. Hide in trees? Beetlenose narrowed his eyes. Do you think we're squirrels? It won't be for long, Crooked Paw urged. And willows soft enough to sink your claws in. Pike Tooth was already heading toward the thicket. He leaped smoothly up a slim trunk and clung to one of the branches. It swayed beneath his weight but he managed to hang on and the lush leaves hid his dark tabby pelt. It'll work, he called. Fallowtail and Cedarpelt bounded after him. Give us time to get ready, Hailstar told Shimmerpelt and Softwing. Then lure the dog toward us. Crookedpaw raced to the thicket and scrambled up a willow. He sank his claws into the trembling branch. Through the leaves, he could just see the two-leg fence. As Hailstar scrambled into place, Oakheart teetered along a wobbly branch and leaped across the small gap into Crooked Paw's tree. I hope this works, he muttered, swaying to keep his balance. Crooked Paw dug his claws in harder. It'll work. Heart in his throat, he stared at the two-leg fence and waited for Shimmerpelt and Softwing to begin. Shimmerpelt slunk forward and slid under the lowest bar of the fence. Softwing's white fur flashed beside her. 
Keeping low, the two warriors crept up the field. Beyond them, the dog charged back and forth. Slowing to a halt, Shimmerpelt rested her tail on Softwing's spine and gave an ear-splitting yowl. Crooked Paul leaned forward, energy bursting beneath his pelt as the dog skidded to a halt and stared down the field. Its bark faltered, then turned to a menacing growl. Run! The dog hurtled down the field. Shimmerpelt spun on her haunches and raced away, Softwing at her side, flying over the grass, their paws hardly touching the ground. Ducking, they shot under the fence and pelted for the willow thicket. Come on! The willows shivered as the attack patrol tensed. The dog squeezed under the fence and exploded into the meadow. Shimmerpelt and Softwing ran like rabbits ahead of it. Crookedpaw glimpsed his father's gray pelt slipping like a shadow through the long grass, keeping pace alongside. A growl rumbled in Rippleclaw's throat. Hush, Hailstar ordered. Shimmerpelt and Softwing closed on the thicket, their paws thrumming the ground. Take him, Softwing yowled as they shot beneath the waiting patrol. Ready, Hailstar hissed as the dog neared. Attack! Crookedpaw dropped and landed on his toes, back arched, pelt bushed, lips drawn back as he hissed at the dog. His clanmates lined up beside him, a wall of spitting rage. The dog yelped and stumbled to a halt. It stared at the cats for a moment. Then, with a yelp of terror, it hurtled away, streaking across the meadow. Fallowtail shrieked. It's heading for the beach cops! Willowpaw. Crookedpaw broke away from the warriors and pelted after the dog. It was taking a line straight for the beaches. Why wasn't it barking? Crookedpaw wheeled it to give some warning to Willowpaw and the others. What if they didn't hear its paw steps? He pelted after it, gaining ground as it jumped over a patch of marshy grass and bolted for the trees. Crookedpaw's pads hit the slope. Willowpaw! Dog! Alpha's panicked yowl sounded from the top. Paws scrabbled on leaves and the cops exploded with shrieks and hisses. Crookedpaw crested the slope. Graypaw, Owlfur, and Bright Sky clung halfway up the beech trunks, staring helplessly down. With a jolt of horror, Crookedpaw spotted Willowpaw. The dog had her cornered, backed up against the roots of a tree. Her eyes were wild as she flailed with her forepaws, hissing in panic. Crookedpaw dived at the dog. He landed square on its back and sank his teeth deep into its fur. As the dog bucked, howling beneath him, he leaped off and growled. The dog turned on him, its eyes blazing with fury. Crookedpaw backed away, pelt bushed up. Come on, you fish brain, follow me. He swiped at its muzzle, then turned and ran. The dog pelted after him, barking with rage. Crookedpaw sped down the slope. He could see Cedar Pelt and Pike Tooth racing toward the beach cops as he dived into the long marshy grass. The ground trembled under his paws as the dog pounded after him. Teeth snapped at his tail, hot breath bathed his heels. Pulling at the ground with his claws, Crooked Paw pushed harder, his mind blank as he hurtled blindly on. Suddenly he broke through a wall of fierce scent. He'd reached his clanmates. Keep running, Hailstar screeched. As Crooked Paw shot past them, the patrol closed ranks behind him and met the dog with a frenzy of claws and teeth. Crookedpaw pulled up, his lungs screaming as he fought to get his breath. Turning, he saw the dog flee. Oakheart led the charge after it. The patrol was driving it toward the fence, back to its home. Yelping in alarm, the dog scrabbled under the lowest bar and fled whimpering up the field. You saved my life! Willowpaw's yowl made Crookedpaw spin around. The pale tabby was racing toward him with Graypaw at her heels. She stopped in front of him, purring loudly. I thought that dog was going to kill me. Eyes shining, she rubbed her cheek along his twisted jaw. Crookedpaw's pelt pricked, hot with embarrassment. Th that's okay, he stammered. Suddenly, Oakheart, Hailstar, and the others were crowding around. He saved me, Willowpaw told them. Her mentor, Owlfer, was still wide-eyed with shock. It all happened so quickly, he explained. I thought Willowpaw had made it up a tree, and then I looked down, and there she was. He trailed off, lost in thoughts of what might have happened. I've never seen anything braver, Bright Sky cut in. Crookedpaw actually jumped on its back. Fallowtail pushed past her clanmates and pressed her muzzle against Crookedpaw's. Thank you, she breathed. I'd die if I lost her again. 
Overwhelmed, Crooked Paw stared at his paws. Any warrior would have done the same, he insisted. He stole a look at Hailstar. Surely he'd managed to impress the River Clan leader this time. Of course you have, Maple Shade's mew sounded in his ear. Look what happens when you put your clan first. Are you sure you don't need more ointment for your paws? Oakheart mimicked Will of Paw's mew as he followed Crooked Paw along the shore. Shut up, Crooked Paw fluffed out his pelt, hoping it would cool him down. The new leaf sun was hot. Oakheart took no notice. But they must be so sore after chasing that dog and rescuing me. Crooked Paw waded into the river, ignoring his brother. Great Paw says she's going to move her nest next to yours, Oakheart persisted. Cool water flooded his ears as Crooked Paw dived under the surface. He swam strongly, following the dip of the riverbed, using his tail to balance him against the buffeting current. Eyes open, he could see a fat trout basking on the bottom. With a kick of his hind legs, he shot forward, snapping his teeth around the trout and pushing upward toward daylight. He broke the surface with a splash, the trout flapping between his jaws. With a flick of his head, he snapped its spine, and the fish drooped instantly. Nice catch! Oakheart was sitting on the shore, washing his face. Crooked Paw climbed out and dropped the fish beside his brother. Aren't you fishing? I thought I'd let you get the best catch first, Oakheart teased. Crooked Paw nudged him playfully, unbalancing him. Tumbling onto his side, Oakheart purred. It's not really serious between you and Willow Paw, is it? Who said it was? Crooked Paw stared at him in surprise. The whole clan's been gossiping since Sun High, Oakheart told him. Crooked Paw snorted. They're like a bunch of elders. He shook out the water from his fur. Willow Paw's just a den mate. Nothing more? No. Willow Paw was nice, and there was something special about her, but it was embarrassing to talk about it. I just like her as a den mate. That's not against the warrior code, is it? Oak Paw padded into the water. I guess not. Crooked Paw watched his brother dive in and disappear. He frowned. Even if he did like Willow Paw, why would she like him? He had a twisted jaw that made other cats stare. Growling irritably, Crooked Paw dived back into the river. Who cares? Learning to be a great warrior was far more important. Chapter 18 Hey, you two, Cedarpelt called to Crooked Paw and Willow Paw as they padded along the sun-drenched riverbank. Slow down. You don't have to keep up with us, Crooked Paw called over his shoulder. We know where we're going and we know how to fish, Alpha sighed. Let them be. Why did I have to get an apprentice who thinks he knows everything? Cedarpelt grumbled loud enough for Crooked Paw to hear over the chattering of the river. Willow Paw brushed against Crooked Paw. Ignore him, she whispered. But Crooked Paw was tired of being treated like a bothersome kit. He trained as hard as any cat, and if he argued with Cedar Pelt over some of the moves, it was only because Maple Shade had shown him a better way. And she, after all, was a Star Clan warrior. Why do I have to have a mentor who thinks I'm a fish brain? He called back. Don't answer him, Alpha advised Cedar Pelt. All apprentices think they know everything until they become warriors. They'll grow out of it. Crooked Paw quickened his pace. We can't leave them behind, Willow Paw fretted. Why not? Crooked Paw was bristling. Willow Paw looked back. It's okay, she meowed. They sat down. She patted into the water. Let's fish here. There's a deep pool in the river just past the stepping stones, Crooked Paw told her. It'll be full of carp hiding from the sun. Willow Paw licked her lips. Sounds good. They padded downstream, side by side. Did you hear the news? Willow Paw mewed. What? Shimmerpelt's moved to the nursery. Shimmerpelt? Crooked Paw nearly tripped over a stone. But she agreed to chase the dog. Willow Paw twitched her tail. I know. What if the dog had got her? She swore she didn't know then. Brambleberry's furious. I bet Piketooth's pretty cross. He'd never be cross with Shimmerpelt, Willow Paw purred. He still can't believe a cat like her would look twice at an old snaggletooth like him. She brushed her muzzle against Crooked Paw's jaw. 
Have you seen Lakeshine's kids yet? The gray and white queen had kitted in the night. What? Crookedpaw was still lost in her scent. Lakeshine's kids, Willowpaw nudged him. Have you seen them? Crookedpaw shook his head. Has she named them yet? Sun Kit and Frog Kit, Willowpaw purred. They're so cute. She let me wash one. Crookedpaw leaped over a shallow pool among the pebbles. It's good news for all of us. River Clan always needs new warriors. They're still kits. They'll be warriors soon enough, Crookedpaw pointed out, just like us. Willowpaw rolled her eyes. Is that all you think about? She bounded ahead and raced along the shore, her paws splashing in and out of the shallows as she veered past clumps of water mint and mossy rocks. Crookedpaw chased after her. Is this the pool? Willowpaw leaped over the first stepping stone, splashing down in the shallows, and pointed her nose to where the water dipped into a smooth, rolling current. That's it, Crookedpaw waded toward it. You have to be careful, he warned. It sucks you down near the bottom. I'm a strong swimmer. Willowpaw reassured him. I know. Crookedpaw glanced at her smooth, strong shoulders and purred. But if it does grab you, don't fight it. Just go limp. The river will wash you downstream where it's shallower. Willowpaw took a deep breath and plunged in. Crookedpaw watched the broken water close over her and waited. Even though he trusted her skills, he couldn't help worrying. The thought that anything bad might happen to her made his chest tighten. He was relieved when her ears broke the surface and she popped up holding a juicy carp. There's loads down there, she mewed happily, and they're too dumb to swim away. Crookedpaw dived in, feeling the water suck at his fur, pulling him down into the school of carp. He grabbed one, swam up, flung it onto the bank, and dived down for another. I want to go next, Willowpaw called as she came up for the third time. Crookedpaw tossed the fresh carp onto the shore. Dive in with me. Willowpaw plunged in and swam down beside him. Her fur clouded around her as she reached the carp pool. She hooked one with her claws and dragged it to her mouth for a killing bite before she turned and began to pull herself up to the surface. Crookedpaw watched, impressed by her grace, before realizing that his lungs were aching. Quickly, he ducked down, grabbed a carp, and swam for the surface. Jeering mews welcomed him back to the air, a patrol of ThunderClan warriors was strutting on the edge of sunning rocks. What's the difference between a River Clan warrior and a fish? One yelled. A fish is hard to catch, his clanmate answered. Another warrior, his fur thick and white, leaned over the edge. Enjoy the river while it's still yours, Willowpaw's pelt bushed, her eyes blazing. How dare they? Crookedpaw tossed his fish to the shore and bounded onto the stepping stones. Spitting with rage, he leaped halfway across the river. Come down here and say that, you worm-ridden fish brains. We just might, the white warrior yelled. Why don't you run home before we do? Come on, then, Crookedpaw unsheathed his claws. I'll rip your ears off. You couldn't climb down if you tried, Willowpaw piped up behind them. The only way ThunderClan can get down from Sunning Rocks is to fall down. Go on, try it. I wouldn't mind if a few of you broke your flea-bitten necks. Crooked paw, Oakheart's mew made them both jump. Come here. Prickling with frustration, Crooked Paw turned and leaped back to shore. The ThunderClan warriors yowled with amusement. Go back to the nursery, wet kit. Crooked Paw growled. Oakheart was pacing with excitement. Save it for your next battle, he meowed. Hailstar wants everyone back at camp. What for? Come on, Oakheart charged away. Willowpaw stared. What's going on? Crookedpaw shrugged. Let's find out. They each scooped a carp from the pile they'd made and raced for camp. The fishtail flapped in Crookedpaw's face as he ran. He skidded through the sedge tunnel, Willowpaw at his heels. Their clanmates were already gathered in the clearing. Oakheart stood panting beside Shellheart while Hailstar paced in the middle, tail swishing. Crookedpaw dropped his fish on the fresh kill pile beside Willowpaws. She'd already slid in beside Graypaw. Crookedpaw nosed his way between Shellheart and Oakheart. What's going on? Listen, Shellheart silenced him. Hailstar was mid-speech. So on the darkest night of the moon, 
We will reclaim Sunning Rocks. At last, Oakheart lashed his tail and Shellheart clawed the ground as the whole clan cheered. What if we lose again? Rippleclaw's question was almost lost in the noise, but he repeated it louder. What if we lose again? The cheers faltered and faded. There will be no battle this time, Hailstar announced. He looked up at the fat waxing moon. Next claw moon, when it's no more than a scratch on the sky, we'll reset the boundaries. Timberfur leaned forward. Won't ThunderClan just set them back again? Worried murmurs rippled through the clan. We'll keep resetting them until ThunderClan gets the message, Hailstar answered. And if it comes to a battle, the River Clan leader glanced at Crookedpaw. We'll fight it, and this time we'll win. As the clan broke into another cheer, Crookedpaw tipped his head to one side. Why had Hailstar looked at him? Didn't he trust him to fight? Yesterday an apprentice saved the life of a clanmate. Hailstar silenced the cheers. Crookedpaw straightened. Oakheart purred. I'm guessing he means you. Hailstar's eyes shone. Crooked paw. He beckoned Crooked Paw forward with a flick of his tail. This apprentice has not yet completed his six moons of warrior training. Heart racing, Crooked Paw padded into the clearing. Brambleberry watched him, her eyes dark. Rainflower wrapped her tail tightly over her paws. Beetlenose whispered something in Volclaw's ear. Hailstar padded to meet him. But I see no point in delaying his warrior ceremony any longer. Crooked Paw's heart jumped. My warrior ceremony. I want Crooked Paw to be in the patrol that resets the borders beyond Sunning Rocks. Hailstar paused. No, he meowed. I want Crooked Jaw. The clan took up the call. Crooked Jaw! Crooked Jaw! Crooked Jaw stared at his leader. Joy fizzed like stars beneath his pelt. Well done. Cedar Pelt walked forward and touched his muzzle to Crooked Jaw's head. Crooked Jaw detected relief in his mew. Glad to get rid of me, he murmured, half joking. It's hard work teaching a cat who already knows everything, Cedar Pelt answered. Crooked Jaw stepped back. I'm sorry, he stared at his paws. Cedar Pelt broke into a purr. I like to believe I taught you something. You taught me so much, Crooked Jaw insisted. And I'm sure you still have plenty to learn. Shellheart's voice made Crooked Jaw turn. His father was gazing at him proudly. Oakheart dashed past the River Clan deputy and wove around Crooked Jaw. We're warriors together at last. Will you share my den? White Fang won't mind. There's room for an extra nest. Congratulations. Beetlenose crossed the clearing, tail flicking. You finally made it. Crooked Jaw met his gaze. Now you've got more competition than just Oakheart. As he spoke, he spotted a familiar pelt moving in the shadows by the reeds. Maple Shade was watching, her gaze slitted. A soft muzzle nudged his shoulder. Willowpaw was purring loudly in his ear. I'm going to miss sleeping beside you. Crooked Jaw twined his tail around hers. Then hurry up and become a warrior. Rainflower hadn't moved. She sat as still as a rock on the far side of the clearing. Lifting his chin, Crooked Jaw squeezed past Oakheart and approached his mother. She didn't move as he neared, only narrowed her eyes. I'm sorry I can't make you proud of me, Crooked Jaw meowed. But I haven't finished yet. I'll do everything I can to make you glad I'm your son. Rainflower stared silently at him. Crooked Jaw fought back the hurt tightening his throat. He lifted his chin, refusing to hide his twisted jaw. You'll never make me ashamed of who I am or what I look like. Turning away, he saw Oakheart and Willowpaw staring at him. Oakheart dashed over and ran the tip of his tail along his brother's spine. Good for you, Crooked Jaw. He glanced past Crooked Jaw, his gaze hardening as it reached Rainflower. If our mother can't be proud of you, it's her loss. We believe in you. Willowpaw's eyes shone at him, reflecting starlight. Feeling as if the bubble of happiness inside him might explode, Crooked Jaw pressed his muzzle to hers and purred. Chapter 19 A night heron called from the far bank, its wings pulsing as it lifted into the air. 
Crooked Jaw saw the flash of its belly as it flew over the reed bed and disappeared upstream. He'd been listening to the bird fishing, the plop as it dived, the splash as it dragged a fish struggling from the river. He tucked his tail tighter over his paws and gazed around the camp. Sitting vigil on his first night as a warrior, Crooked Jaw felt the weight of responsibility for his sleeping clanmates. He glanced up at Silverpelt. Thank you for helping me to become a warrior. Thank you for helping me to keep my clan safe. Crooked Jaw? Crooked Jaw twisted his head. Who's that? A pale shape twined around him. He barely felt the wraith-like pelt as it brushed his. Have you forgotten me so quickly? Maple Shade! Crooked Jaw blinked in surprise. What do you want? I've been waiting for you to come and train, she growled. But if you won't come to me, I'll come to you. I can't train tonight. I'm sitting vigil. Do you think you've learned all there is to learn? No, I'm sitting vigil. The fur ruffled along his spine. He was a warrior now, just like Maple Shade. She had to respect that. She couldn't boss him around like an apprentice anymore. I can't talk now, he whispered. I'll visit you when I can. Suddenly he was alone. He glanced over his shoulder just to make sure, then shifted his weight and went on with his vigil. Crooked Jaw was shivering by the time dawn began pushing back the darkness. The apprentice's den rustled and Willowpaw slipped out. She crossed the misty clearing and sat beside Crooked Jaw. You're cold, she pressed against him, warm and soft from sleep. Crooked Jaw felt his eyes begin to close. Hey, Willowpaw poked him. The clan will be waking any moment. Crooked Jaw snapped awake, his heart lurching. He pulled away from Willowpaw. He needed the fresh dawn chill to keep him alert. Hi, Crooked Jaw, White Fang patted from his den with Oakheart on his tail. How was the vigil? Long. Crooked Jaw stood up, shaking each numb paw in turn. And chilly. You should try doing it in Leaf Bear, Oakheart joked. Hailstar padded from his den. How's our newest warrior, he called. Ready for patrol, Crooked Jaw stretched his stiff muscles. Shellheart ducked out of his den. Alpha, Bright Sky, are you ready? Willow Paul flicked her tail. Oh, I'd forgotten, she circled Crooked Jaw excitedly. We're going on dawn patrol. Then Alpha is going to show me a new move, and we're going to try a mock battle. She started to the apprentice's den, calling for Graypaw. Wake up, we're leaving. Graypaw stuck her head out of the den and yawned. Already? Willowpaw rolled her eyes. It's called the dawn patrol for a reason. She led a sleepy Graypaw to where Bright Sky was stretching beside Shellheart. Owlfur was picking through the remains of the fresh kill pile. Take something to Lakeshine. Shellheart ordered. She'll be hungry. And thirsty, Brambleberry padded from her den. She signaled to Echo Mist, who followed Hailstar out of the leader's den. Will you sit with the kits while she goes for a drink? Echo Mist purred. I'd love to. Come on, Graypaw, Bright Sky called to her apprentice, who was lapping water at the edge of the river. Those borders won't mark themselves. Shellheart was already leading Owlfur and Willowpaw out of camp. Graypaw scampered across the clearing and caught up with her mentor as she ducked out of the tunnel. Crooked Jaw felt a tug of disappointment as he watched the apprentices leave, but suddenly excitement thrilled through him. He didn't have to train. He was a warrior now. He glanced at the space where the fresh kill pile should be. He'd hunt. By the end of the day, the fresh kill pile would be heaped with fish. Good catch, Crooked Jaw, Shimmerpelt called across the clearing, her mouth full. The setting sun made her pelt glow as she leaned down for another bite of the fat trout glistening at her paws. Shellheart purred. I don't know if he left any fish in the river for tomorrow. The River Clan deputy sat with Timberfur and Whitefang sharing a pike. Crooked Jaw glanced proudly at the fresh kill pile. He'd caught nearly every fish there. Bright sky rolled onto her back. The rest of us might as well move to the elders then, now that Crooked Jaw's a warrior. She teased. Crooked Jaw stretched, his muscles aching from hunting. Newly fishing is fun. Willowpaw nudged him. Even without me? She whispered. It's better, he teased. You steal all the best fish. You snake heart. She pushed him with her head and he fell back, pretending to be beaten. 
No more, please. That's just the start. She leaped on him and they tumbled across the mossy ground. Willowpaw's claws tickled his ribs. Hey, he yelped, squirming. That's not fair. She paused. Really? She blinked down at him innocently, then tickled him again. You should have thought of that before you started teasing me. Birdsong padded down the slope toward the fresh kill pile. She glanced at the two young cats, her whiskers twitching. They start younger every year. She began to rummage through the fish, pulling a plump gray perch from the bottom. Tangle whisker, she called up to the elders den. Are you coming or are you going to spend the evening pulling ticks? She shook her head, muttering half to herself. He can't even reach most of them. Willow Paul leaped to her paws. I'll help him. She nuzzled Crooked Jaw's ear and headed up the slope. Crooked Jaw straightened and yawned. The sun had disappeared behind the willow and the camp was turning blue in the twilight. Your nest is ready, Oakheart nodded toward his den. It's the one with fresh moss. Thanks, Crooked Jaw was looking forward to a good night's sleep. He padded to his den and tucked inside. The cocoon of woven reeds rested against the crumbling bark of the fallen tree. It was just big enough for three nests. Crooked Jaw could tell by sniffing which was White Fang's and which was Oakheart's. He padded past them and climbed into his own, grateful for the soft, clean moss that lined the carefully threaded reeds. Oakheart must have been working on this for ages. Crooked Jaw felt a jolt of affection for his brother. Oakheart had never lost faith in him. A purr rumbled in his throat as he curled down into his nest and closed his eyes. Wake up! A snarl wrenched him from sleep. Crooked Jaw leaped to his paws. He was in the shadowy forest. Maple Shade's eyes blazed in the gloom. Have you forgotten your promise? Crooked Jaw, still half asleep, stared at her. What? Your promise! Is this because I didn't come training last night? He struggled against the tiredness fogging his thoughts. No, you mouse brain. I heard you talking to Willowpaw. I've seen you, acting like mates for life. What did I ask you to do? To look after my clan? Crooked Jaw backed away. Mapleshade's breath was rank. She lunged for him, swiping his twisted jaw so viciously that he staggered, pain shooting through his face. I asked you to put your clan before everything. She stood over him as he crouched down, stiff with shock. That includes any feelings you might have for that pathetic ball of fur you've been mooning over. He stared up at her. Do you mean Willowpaw? You want to be a great warrior, don't you? Of course. Crooked Jaw could scent rage pulsing from her, hot and sharp. Then forget about love and friendship and what you want, you selfish mouse brain, and put your clan first like you promised. I have put my clan first. Anger surged beneath his pelt. Don't tell me that I haven't. He squared up against her. Mapleshade stared back as vicious as a fox. Why was she suddenly so mean? Star Clan cats weren't supposed to be mean. Crooked Jaw had become a warrior. She should be proud. Confused, he turned and fled. Swerving between the dark trees, he raced through the tangled, slippery undergrowth. Mist swirled around him, and he slipped and staggered as he ran, fighting to keep his balance as trunks loomed from the fog, and the undergrowth seemed to grab for his paws. Heart pounding, he slowed. He was tired, and he didn't want to be here. He wanted to sleep. He wanted to be back in his nest. He stumbled to a halt, hanging his head as he caught his breath. You're back. The croaking mew made him jump. Crooked Jaw squinted and made out a shape in the shadows up ahead. It shambled toward him and he recognized the pelt. Goose feather? The ThunderClan medicine cat was here again. He must share his dreams with StarClan a lot. Goose feather dipped his head. Maple Shade's apprentice. He patted closer and sniffed Crooked Jaw's pelt. I've been hearing rumors about you. Crooked Jaw backed away. From who? Don't forget I share with Star Clan. Is that why you're here? Crooked Jaw's paws pricked. Were the old cat's whiskers twitching? I suppose you could say that. What did he mean? What does Star Clan say about me? Goosefeather circled Crooked Jaw slowly. That you could be a great warrior. Crooked Jaw sensed the old Tom's gaze flicking over his pelt. Really? He brightened. 
Don't take any notice of that old fool, Maple Shade's mew made him turn. She'd caught up to him. She must have run fast, yet she looked as cool as ever and her breath was slow and steady. Goosefeather glanced at her, amusement lighting his gaze. I may be an old fool, he rasped, but at least my heart is true. He padded past Crooked Jaw and stopped in front of Maple Shade. My heart isn't soured by bitterness or guided by revenge. Crooked Jaw padded closer. What do you mean? Goosefeather ignored him. You should tread the path you're following with care, Maple Shade. A destiny shouldn't be played with like prey. Maple Shade barged past the old Thunder Clan medicine cat. Ignore him, Crooked Jaw. His mind has been addled by too many visions. Crooked Jaw met her gaze. At least he speaks to me like an equal, he challenged. Maple Shade broke into a purr. You're not upset because I reminded you of your promise, are you? She pressed against him, guiding him forward away from Goose Feather. Maybe I was a little harsh, but I was frightened that you were forgetting your destiny. I want you to be the greatest warrior River Clan has ever known, the greatest any clan will ever know. Willowpaw is a sweet, pretty cat, and I'm not surprised you're fond of her. But the sweetest traps are often the most dangerous. She will soften you and sway you from your course. She halted. You do still want to be a great warrior, don't you? Yes, Crooked Jaw cried. Very good. Maple Shade stopped him with a flick of her tail. That is all I ask. She padded on into the mist, her voice trailing after her. Everything I do, Crooked Jaw, I do with your best interests at heart.